The openings are so hard. They're so. What are you supposed to do in the openings? What? What's the best openings for you uh, to play, and why? So I had a lot, a lot of questions when I started to play chess because I really didn't know what was a good openings. I discovered, because I lost so many games, I discovered that the best openings for me were those where I could develop my pieces quickly. When I started, I thought it was really good to bring out my queen, and I moved my queen all over the board, and I forgot to ever develop the rest of my pieces. The crazy part is sometimes I won the game by doing that, but usually it was a very bad idea, and oftentimes I'd lose my queen. And if I lost my queen, I, I didn't even know how to play chess. My queen was so important to me. But then I got better, and I realized that the best thing I could do in the openings is to get my pieces off the first or last rank as quickly as I could. I discovered gambits. Do you guys know gambits? You know, good, good gambit? I did, what a gambit is, a gambit is where I deliberately sacrifice a pawn or two or even three or sacrifice a piece, usually a knight, to get ahead in development. And I'd like to show you an example of a gambit that I'd like to play. So first of all, how many of you would like to play this move? Okay, very good. So now I'm going to hit you guys with a gambit to explain what I would try to do uh, to get better at chess. I tried to get all my pieces as quickly off the back row as possible, except for my king. I wanted my king in safety. That was important to me. So I'm going to play d5. Okay. I'm attacking your pawn. So what are you guys going to do? Take the pawn. You bet. Yes. So, check this out. I'm a pawn down. In the time count, right at this moment, we would say that white has one, black has zero. Black has nothing. He's developed nothing. But it's one pawn more, and white's ahead in the time count. Let me play this move. I'm attacking your pawn. What are you going to do, Arjun? You're not going to take my pawn? No, we're going to take the pawn. How many like to take the pawn? It's a good move. You take the pawn. Okay. So now let's just, let's just see what's happened. Now I'm down two pawns. I'm going to recapture the pawn. And now, what's the time count? Zero for white. Oh, oh, you mean, well, right now, in terms of material, white is a pawn up, but in terms of the time count, uh, black, I'm the only one who's developed a, a unit. I'm ahead one to nothing. What would you like white to do? What's a good move for white? Mm -hmm. Young man. Mm -hmm. Knight to f2. Knight to f... F3. F3. Okay. Now, how many of you guys like White's position? He's a pawn up, right? Yeah, I like White's position too. But I also like Black's position. So right now, the score is one to one in the time count, but you guys are leading in the material count. I'm going to play E5. So now I'm ahead. Arjun, what would you? Bishop to b5. You guys are doing really, really good because now it's two to two in the time count and you're still ahead of pawn. I'm going to attack your knight. Ah, Arjun again, what? Bishop takes knight check. Now you guys didn't really have to give up your bishop at this point. It's okay if you wanted to. 
Now, at this exact moment, we stop again, and what's the score? Uh, uh, ooh, two to one. But I'm ahead. I have two, you have one. Guess what? That knight better move. If the knight doesn't move, I'm going to capture it. Question. Queen e2. Queen e2 is a good move. That pins my pawn against my king. You guys all see that? That's a good move. Let's say I bring my knight up. Now, by the way, it's two, one, two, three. Young man in the blue, yeah. Pawn to d3. Okay, now you guys are attacking my pawn. That's really good. I like what you guys are doing. I'm going to move my bishop here. Young lady. Sorry? Yeah, I'm attacking the pawn, but I'm also, for the moment, my idea was to pin. I'm hoping you'll take my pawn and my bishop will take your queen. Yes, sir. Pawn to c4. Pawn to c4. Okay. So how many of you like this move? Uh, it's a little tricky because careful, pay attention. If you, your pawn on d3 is protected by the pawn on c2, if you move your pawn here, you're giving me the opportunity to capture your pawn with my queen. Then I get my pawn back and I'll be ahead in the time. So another move, young man, what would you do? Knight to c3, very good. See, you guys are actually doing pretty good because you're, you're bringing your pieces out fast. I'm trying to bring my pieces out fast and you guys, you captured a pawn and you're doing very, very well. I'm going to bring my bishop out so my bishop pins your knight to the king. Castle. Castle. Very, very good. When you start thinking and counting on the time count, you start to realize what a wonderful, wonderful move castles is because you bring two pieces into play at once. So at the moment, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six for white. One, two, three, four, Five. But it's my move. Six, seven. Okay. Are you? Bishop G5. Oh, now we have to start to think again. Uh, when you played the move queen to e2, the queen pinned the pawn against my king. I just moved my king. Well, okay, so the point was, was that a moment ago, I could not capture your knight. I could not capture. Now I can capture your knight. Yes, sir. Knight to g5. Knight to g5. Okay, you move your knight. Now, this is also important. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. When I capture your pawn, what have I done is I've captured a pawn that's in the time count for you. So I've taken away one of your time counts. One, two, three, four, five. A moment ago you had six. Now you only have five. I'm attacking your queen. My bishop is protecting the pawn. My queen is protecting the pawn. What are you guys going to do, young man? Pawn takes d3. Pretty good. What, what do you guys think I'm going to do next? Bishop takes d3. Bishop takes d3. Now, what has happened is I, I've won. Yes, young lady. 
that exactly well my bishop is about to take the queen when the queen moves I'm going to take the rook so that will be a skewer tactic okay but let's count what happened one two three four five one two three four five six I won my pawn back and I'm about to win material the gambit paid off for me that worked out pretty well let's go back to the start because remember at the start you're white and you guys have the advantage you have the opening move you get to bring out your pawns and pieces before I do but what you just saw was a gambit where I deliberately sacrificed a pawn to get ahead in the to get ahead in the time count let's do it again okay we'll do a different one this time you make a different opening move we're going to be really clever this time let's say you guys open up with the queen pawn yes Arjun. what do you think d5 and c4 okay so this of course is the queen pawn opening and I like to do a different kind of a gambit. I played knight f6, okay? I developed my knight, Arjun. It's c4, c5. This is the gambit that, now c4 is the most common move. The top grandmasters in the world play c4 on their second turn. So at this very moment, it's two to one, clear. Now what I would do is I would play c5, attacking white's center. Young man. Pawn e3. Pawn e3 is a, is a decent move, very good move. Also very good move is knight f3, protecting the pawn. Probably not such a good move as pawn takes pawn, but the most popular move, everybody played this move against me, is to advance the pawn. This is what everybody in the world, the grandmasters, Gary Kasparov, Anatoly Karpov, the world champions, Magnus Carlsen, they all advance the pawns. They think that that's the best move for white is to get the pawns in the center up the board. What's the time count exactly at this moment? Two to two, pretty basic, pretty simple, right? Now comes, the ba now comes my gambit, and the gambit was originally discovered or created by a grandmaster by the name of Pal. Like, do you want to be my pal? Pal Benko was his name. And Pal Benko, he lives in New York. He was originally from the country of Hungary. How many of you know the country Hungary? Okay, Pal Benko, and I thought it was a great idea, he played this move. Whoa! Young lady, what do you think? The pawn. The pawn. Correct. So, so now, at this moment, it's one to two, but two to two, and you guys are a pawn up. Now, Pal Benko, plays this move, attacking the pawn. Young lady. Right, b5 captures a6. Now, exactly, exactly in this moment, it's two pawns for you, two to two. Then what I would do is I would take the pawn. So now, I'm only a pawn down. I'm only a pawn down. But what's the result? One, one, two, three, three to one. So I'm now ahead in the time count. I didn't mind being behind a pawn or even two, but I wanted to get my pieces off the back rank. Now another thing, I'd like your opinion because a lot of grandmasters aren't sure. So I'd like to take a poll of the class. Now think about this for a moment, because in the history of chess, hundreds and hundreds of years of history,
they always argue about certain important points, big arguments. So here's the question for you. Black's rook on a8 has not moved, correct? It's not moved. But in this position, would you consider that this rook is developed? Even though it hasn't moved, do you think that rook is good? How many of you think that rook is effective? Raise your hand if you think it's effective. Okay. How many of you think that even though it may be effective, you shouldn't count it in the time count? Okay. So this has been a big, big controversy for many years. And, you know, to take your opinion and to know what you think, a lot of grandmasters do that. So now, in my opinion, I actually count like this. Black has moved his knight for one, his pawn for two, his bishop for three. I actually count the rook and I say, rook for four. Why? Because there's no pawn in front of the rook, so I consider the rook developed because it has a chance to attack this pawn. So for a lot of people, we actually say one, two, three, four. Other people who are, we'll call them traditionalists, say it only counts when you move the piece. So right now, I say four to one. So I'm happy to give up one pawn to take a lead of three. Shall we make a move for white? Knight to c3. So now it's two to four. Okay. Now here's where I want you to think a little bit. I'm ahead in the time count for black. I'm playing the black side. I'm ahead in the time count, and I want to continue to develop my army. I got a problem. Is this bishop good? How many of you think the bishop's good? I don't think the bishop's good. The bishop, it can't move. If I try to develop the bishop this way on the f8 to a3 diagonal, if I try to develop the bishop this way, guess what? I got a problem, right? My pa Exactly. Two pawns are blocking it. So I want to develop my bishop in a different way. I'll play g7, g6. If I put my bishop here, is anybody blocking it? Only the knight. Only the knight. Okay. I'll play g6. What move will you guys play? Young man. The bishop to g5. Bishop to g5. That's pretty good. You're developing a piece. I'll go here. Now let's count just a second. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm still counting the rook, even though you may not. What's another good move for white? Arjun. Bishop takes f6. Okay, that's an even trade, but now what's blocking my bishop? Nothing. Nothing. My bishop's empty. Okay, go ahead, continue the game. Who would, uh, what, what move is good for white? Young man. On to, on to h3. Pawn to h3. Okay. This is probably okay, but, but keep in mind what I'm trying to do in this, this whole lecture is to try to urge you to move your pieces off the back rank. Now, yeah, let me castle. Now let's count for a second. Castling is really good because that just really boosted me in the time count. One, two, three, four five, six, maybe seven, six or seven, we're not sure. I'm going to say seven. One, two, three. So right now I'm really far ahead. What does it mean when I'm far ahead in the time count? It means I get to attack you. So be careful. What will you do, Arjan? E4. E2, E4. Okay. So now 
One, two, three, four. Okay. In this position, I'm going to capture your bishop. So I'm going to let you recapture with the king. Okay? So now you can't castle. You can't castle. When you, fa when you fail the castle, remember our whole army is a team, right? And you got to talk to your team members and you got to ask them how they are feeling. Are they feeling good? When the white general talks to the rook on h1 and asks him how he is feeling, what do you think the rook is saying? Very sad. It's not, he's not happy. It's going to take w White a number of moves to get that rook into play. Okay, let me play d6. Your turn. All right. What do you want to do? Yes. Knight g1, e2. I'm going to go knight b8, d7. Again. F2, F3. So now you're really making a very nice um, chain. Yeah, I like that. That's a good way of putting it, chain. Okay, I'm going to bring my queen here. Now, now what am I attacking? What? Go ahead. The B2 pawn. The B2 pawn. See, because I'm ahead in time, it means I'm going to get to attack you guys faster than you can attack me. Young man, what do you think? I'm attacking the pawn on B2. I'd use the knight on C3 to, to A4. Knight on C3 goes to A4, attacking my queen. Now remember when I was asking you a while ago, what, was this rook developed? And then maybe some of you were doubtful. You can see that in this position, I could take the knight. Ooh. I could take the knight, you would take my rook, I could take the pawn. So I could sacrifice an exchange for development. But how about this move? How about I move my queen here? I'm attacking the knight with the queen as well as with the rook. So now, again, let's, see, let's do the time count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But you guys have an extra pawn. What do you want? What do you think? You ready to give me your rook? Young man, what do you I will take the knight. Ooh. Young man, what do you B but if you play B three, I thanks to my open bishop. I could take a rook. Would you be happy? Now who would be ahead? Yes, yeah. Um, you you knight, knight A to C3. OK, but that means that you've come back, and I'll recapture my pawn. Ooh. So now we're even, Stephen, and I have a lead in development. One of the. At a certain moment in the game, I stop using the time count. I no longer think about the time count. When do you think you should stop counting? At what time? Arjun, when do you stop counting? So when you took my knight, the, 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 was there a drum roll and that's the end of the opening, everybody? I'm not sure. So I define it as follows. When do I stop using the time count? The moment my rooks are connected. 
The moment the rooks are connected, I say the opening is over, and I start thinking about material in space. OK, in this moment, I've done really well. I'd like to show you another gambit for a moment. OK, this is a pretty cool gambit. In this gambit, I sacrifice a piece. Ooh, that's pretty good. Let's see how I could sacrifice a piece. This pattern, or this opening, comes from the Ruy Lopez. White opens with his king pawn, e4. Black responds in kind, e5. The classical king pawn defense. How many of you have played this position and played knight f3? Yeah, me too. You attack the pawn on e5. Black plays knight c6, defending the pawn. Now, the next move was invented in the 15th century by a Spanish priest by the name of Lopez. And he wrote a book about his experiences. And uh, this move uh, gets his name, the Ruy Lopez. OK. So now, black plays a6, attacking the bishop. Arja, what? That's the question. What should you do? Some people play bishop a4. Some people take the knight. How many of you like to take the knight? OK. Very good. This is one of the top moves. Bishop takes c6. And when I was, yes, young lady. Yes. And I took this way. Pawn takes the bishop. No. White castles. White castles. OK. That's the best move, by the way, castles. Exactly in this moment, after the bishop captured, what's the time count? Three to two. Three to two. So, b but black's ahead in the time count, right? So wow. White started the game, and all Already he's behind in the time count. OK, white castles. And exactly in this moment, it's one, two, three, four, four to three. So castling has accelerated white's uh, development. I'm black. I would play the move bishop to g4. And I'm pinning the knight against the queen. Pawn to h3. Pawn to h3. Pawn to h3 attacks my bishop and asks me the same question that Black asked about this bishop over here. What are you going to do? Are you going to take the knight, Arjun? H5. Yes. That was the move I like to play. I love the move h7, h5. Am I crazy? Did I just leave my bishop in capture? How many of you think I made a terrible mistake? Yeah. I, do you guys mind if I take my move back? No. Will you allow me to take my move back? No. Didn't you ever want to take a move back? No. Never? I made it. Oh, come on. I made a mistake. I did, can, please? No. OK. Your turn. Will you take my bishop? Oh. You guys are really mean. I'm telling you, after this class, I'm going to talk to the club and say, these kids, they're, they're just horrible. OK, you took my bishop. <laughs> That's worth three. I took your pawn. That, right. Exactly. How many would like to take the e5 pawn? Yeah. Wow. Wow, a free pawn. So how many are happy now with white? Yes. So that's one pawn. Uh-oh. These bishops are off the board. So you guys have a whole night more. Now remember a moment ago, I was asking a very key question. Was that rook on a8 
in that Benko Gambit developed? And how many thought it was? And how many thought it was not? And how many weren't sure? Okay. Now we're going to reverse it for a moment. See this rook? How many count it as developed? How many say, it hasn't moved, so it's not developed. That's ridiculous. Okay. I count this rook as developed even though it hasn't moved because it's on the open file. Now, I'm going to play, da, 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 da. how many of you saw this coming? Me. I'm going to play queen to h4. Ooh. And what's my threat? What's my threat? If you go down to h1, then the, the king will steal. Or h2. It will be a checkmate. Correct. I can go down to h2 or h1. You guys are a knight ahead. I know you're happy, but you're facing checkmate. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. By the way, what's the time count? One, two, three, four. I say one, two, three, four, five. Even though black isn't ahead that much in the time count, he's threatening checkmate. What do you want to do? Well, as soon as I move my rook, if I were to make a castles, then I would count it. At this moment, I'm not counting the rook because it's the pawn's in the way. I am counting this rook because it's open. Now, because I'm threatening checkmate here, queen h2, I'm threatening checkmate here, what can white do, possibly? Yes, f3. f3. Probably you have two moves, in fact. You could probably play f3 to give your king a square, or f4, same idea. We'll go with f3 for a moment. Now what can I do? Yes, yes. Yes, the black pawn can take the white pawn. And then the white pawn can take the, the black pawn. Well, you got to be careful. How many of you would like to play check? Not so good, right? But I got a better move. How many of you would like to play this check? And then when the king moves, you could take the knight, right? How many of you like queen h2 check? That's pretty good. You get to win back your knight. But there's a even a very, very strong move in the position. Young man, what do you think? Yeah. So you play g3. What this move does, it stops the, yeah. It blocks the king from moving. And white cannot stop checkmate. Yes, young man. Then if I go here, indeed your king can run away. But I would not go to h2. Where do you think I'd go? h1. h1. Then your king can't run anywhere, and it's checkmate. That checkmate came out of the blue, right? White was doing OK. That's patterns. As you start to play more and more chess, you start to realize that openings contain a lot of patterns. What I'd like you to do in your games, like this week or next, is try some gambits. Don't be afraid to go ahead, sacrifice some pawns, and to try to get ahead in the time count. That's so crucial in the openings. Are there any questions? Any of you have any questions about openings? How it went? How it's good? Should I show you the rook sacrifice that I saw earlier today? Yes, young lady. Would you like to see a rook sacrifice? Now, a moment ago, I just showed you pawn sacrifices. I showed you a bishop sacrifice. I was coming in to give the lecture today, and I saw two young brothers, and they were playing, and the game went e4, e5. 
Knight came out. Knight came out. Bishop came out. How many of you played this position before? Oh, yeah. I know this one. The knight came out attacking the pawn. The knight came here attacking this pawn. Okay. The bishop came out here to c5, and white captured the pawn on f7. So this move f attacks the queen and attacks the rook. Oh, there's a bishop. Be careful. That bishop protects the knight so you can't capture. Black captured this pawn with check. Whoa, that's wild. What are you? King f1. King f1. That was what was played. King f1 was the move that was played. Black moved his queen and white captured the rook. Oh my. So look at this. Black is down an entire rook. And what's the time count? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five. But is it worth a whole rook? Ooh, we don't know yet. So black in this moment he dropped his bishop back to b6. Then what happened? Well, you guys played. What, what did your brother do now? You played knight c3. Okay. And then you played queen c5. Queen to c5, attacking the bishop. What else does black threaten? What else? <coughs> yes. But Black has a threat. What is Black's threat? Young man. Checkmate. Checkmate. Queen f2. White played bishop f7 check to get his bishop out. And Black made a mistake. He moved his king here. He should have brought his king here. He moved his king here. And then to protect against the checkmate, queen e2, right? Queen e2 protected the checkmate. And then d six, yes, d6 was played, d3 was played, the bishop came out attacking the queen. This, I, this is one of my favorite moves in chess. Gaining development with tempo. Black moves his bishop off the back rank and attacks the queen forcing white to move his queen, and so black gets an extra move in the time count. Did you play queen e1 or queen? I think I queen e1. Right. Yeah. Queen e1, and then did you move your king? Or the knight came somehow? Yeah, knight d4. Knight d4. Then it was... Like knight a4? Queen yeah. Knight a4. Queen e3. Oh. Queen f2. King f8. Knight a4. Queen takes c2. We're coming to the end. Knight takes b6. Now, everybody take a quick look at this position. Imagine that you had the black pieces and you were playing in the world championship for under 12 years old and if you won the game you win the gold medal and you have the black pieces okay so you got to find a move that will win the gold medal black. with black black to play and win the gold medal young lady what would you do Yeah, but then it would just be a trade. Queen takes queen, check. King takes f2, and it's just an even Stephen trade. Young man, what do you think? Queen to d1. Queen to where? D1. Queen to d1, check. Are you 100% sure that that would win the gold medal? No. Only if you're 100% sure it's the gold medal. 
Young man. Uh, black bar should be uh, E2. Is he right? Is he right? Yeah. Did that win the game? Yes. Yes. From the horse. Bishop E2, check to the king. How many saw that move? Ooh. So what happens if we move the king here? Check, man. Oh, we. Huh? Huh? I mean, queen D1. And that's checkmate. So, there you go. It was a great game. I just happened to be for the lecture. Thank you all for coming. Remember that during the week, there's a lot of events. There's a lot of tournaments. There's a lot of quads. Um, and uh, you're all welcome. So, thank you. Have a great weekend. Mm -hmm.